Halo Infinite allows the most customizable experience we've ever had for a Halo game, so there's a lot to take in. So in this video, I'm going to give you the best controller, mouse, keyboard, and video settings for you to take into consideration while playing Halo Infinite. If you want to know more, we'll stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. Hey guys, Kevin here. Welcome to the channel, the channel that keeps you up to date with everything going on with Halo. Today we're doing a tips and trick video on the best settings for Halo Infinite. If you're looking for something specific, check out the timestamps in this video as well. If you guys like these tips and trick kind of videos, make sure you tap that like button as it really helps out the video and channel to get a better place within that YouTube algorithm. If you want to stay up to date with everything going on with Halo as we ramp up to the release of Halo Infinite, make sure you tap subscribe. So. Let's get right into the content here. So first, let's jump into the controller settings. I have my controller set up right here on the screen as well, so you can kind of follow along with my button presses as well, because we're going to be doing a lot of sensitivity settings with this. Now, obviously, a lot of this can be up to personal preference, but there is a general trend, which I kind of follow in with that general trend as well when it comes to settings. But if you want to fine tune things, it's kind of up to you. But this is what I like to run and what a lot of other people like to run as well. So you can see my button layout is actually under custom. That's because you can completely map your controller within the game for Halo infinite but you can use the different button layouts as templates as all well. mine's is basically bumper jumper with minor tweaks which we'll get into a little bit later thumbstick layout default vibration i turn off because one vibration can kind of mess with your aim a little bit it does feel a little bit more immersive and more responsive yes i understand that if you want to have that on more power to you most people turn this off just to avoid any kind of extra movement happening with your controller with aiming and also it does save on battery life as well but if you like a vibration keep it on you have invert settings if you like playing flight simulator you're up playing that some people like playing inverted essentially uh here's some really key options you want to change up guys you have hold crouch hold zoom hold sprint movement assisted steering maintain sprint auto clamber and step jump so let's get into this i like having hold crouch turned on because it allows much more fluid movement within the game crouching is very key to the movement within halo and you want to have that very fluid kind of motion so holding down crouch is actually super important hold zoom kind of depends if you use the left trigger for aiming i use the right stick to click in to zoom in on various things and that's just kind of a toggle option, which I personally like. The game also will kick you out of zoom when you get shot. So you don't really have this issue too much of zooming in to one of the unzoom kind of situations. So I like to have it turned off. For hold sprints, uh, I would generally have this turned off just because it doesn't really play well with the way Halo works out. Mainly keep that off. As movement assisted steering is very interesting as it allows you to use your left stick for turns as well. While driving a vehicle, it's kind of good if you want to like have all your movement on one stick but for the most part i've grown up playing halo for the last 20 years i like having this turned off maintain sprint can be really nice because there's a lot of ledges and small things you'll jump down off of which so you can maintain your sprint some pros actually have this turned on i have it turned off just because i like having all of movements of my character controlled by me i have auto clamber turned off just to avoid any kind of accidental clambers step jump is another thing where some players have it turned on just because it allows you to do shorter jumps without having to bother with different kind of button combinations and automatically recognize when a shorter jump is only needed. I have this turned off just for more consistent jump heights. Next, we're going to cover sensitivities, zoom sensitivities, and also the different dead zones and thresholds you need to change up as well, because default, not really that great. With Halo Infinite, the aim assist is very low in this game, probably the lowest in the franchise. So what I like to do is have a low sensitivity, high acceleration. So for acceleration here, I get all the way up to five. What having a high acceleration does is has it so then you hit your max turn radius sooner. So you can see here, for example, once I hit right on my look stick right here, it starts my max turn radius. You can kind of see how that looks. This is with acceleration all the way down to the lowest setting. You can kind of see how much slower it is to get to that max turn radius. So I like having it at a high rate. With my sensitivity low at 2.5, that way my minor movements don't seem so jerky when I'm shooting. It helps me stay on target better. And when I need to turn around, I hit the acceleration speed faster. This is something that's very preferential. So I definitely would say suggest play around with this in training mode to figure out what exactly works out best for you. Halo Infinite allows you to change your zoom sensitivities. And I kept everything the same except for on five time zoom, which is the first scope of the sniper rifle zoom. I have it at 1.4 because it does feel a little clunky with the sniper rifle. Now when it comes to the move thumbsticks, the look thumbsticks, when it comes to the thresholds and radius, I try to keep it at as low as possible because lower the threshold the more responsive your controller will be i have these tuned up just high enough so i don't experience any stick drift while shooting because i can considerably affect your aim now when it comes to the actual buttons and stuff like that for button layouts uh most of this is pretty standard to just bumper jumper because that's what i've learned since halo 3 there are some other preferences like recons and that i really favor one as well 
I will say for your controller, you want to try to avoid taking your thumbs off the sticks as much as possible. Now I have an Elite controller, so I have these paddles on the back of the controller. Uh, so my right paddle, I can use it for the X button, which will allow me to use equipment without having to take my thumbs off the stick. My other paddle, I like to use Mark on there as well, so I can quickly, quickly just look around, mark something, and keep looking without having to take my thumb off the left stick to hit up on the D-pad as well. I can just keep looking around and mark things as I see them fit. I can jump around, mark, I can jump around, use equipment as well like it's very fluid motions right here not a whole lot of people are utilizing marking guys and it's a huge benefit to your team to be able to spot things when you see somebody quickly run walking around you can just quickly see someone mark it without having to like take your thumb off the sticks and stuff like that you can continue moving and shooting freely so i highly suggest finding a way to where you can have your mark button not have it move off your sticks now for you pc players out there most of my settings when it comes to the movement and aiming it's going to be very similar to the controller just for consistency when i like to hop back and forth occasionally uh, the main thing is sensitivity what you want to get down as well you can see my sensitivity is all the way down to 0.6 my general rule of thumb when it comes to shooters i want my 180 turn radius to be the my max movement i have allowed on my mouse pad right here so if i turn all the way to the right that's a 180 and that's pretty much all the space that i have right now on my mouse pad for the most part because with halo infinite it's uh you know pretty difficult on mouse and keyboard you're gonna want to re really utilize your movement keys for aiming as well very similar as you do as on controller so you're gonna want a rather low sensitivity so you can do those minor adjustments to go for those headshots a lot easier than you normally would be able to. Now, one thing you don't see often within aiming and sensitivity videos are your video settings, which actually can affect your experience quite a lot. If you don't have a fluid experience while playing Halo Infinite, it can really affect your aim. So generally what I like to do is use 100 as my FOV. I find that to be a sweet spot of having enough peripheral vision without having your targets be on the screen too small. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. So let's just take an example of this skewer right here, right? Looks kind of small on the screen. Let's go all the way down to the lowest FOV possible. Right here at 65, this is straight console stuff. You can see how much bigger that that skewer is on screen. This totally affects how like your aiming would work in multiplayer as well. Looking at Spartans, let's, let's bump that up all the way to 120 right here. So you can, you can see how much smaller that is and basically smaller movements I would be needing to have for my mouse and controller to actually land the shots and also have better visual quality of being able to see what's going on and land my targets. So generally I like to kind of run in the middle of right at 100. It seems to be a nice spot for me at least. But of course it's up to personal preference. You can see I'm rocking a 1080 Ti. So my graphics, I can't really push a whole lot. So I'm putting a lot of emphasis on functionality rather than graphical quality. My scale resolution is at 100. I have bumped this down to 1080p sometimes as well, just to maintain good frame rate. Locked at 60 FPS because I feel like that's the minimum of any kind of shooter out there. Again, all my graphic settings are pretty much all the way down on low or medium. I just kind of use auto low just because my settings can't really handle it a whole lot. Um, just keep in mind that like anti-aliasing, also ambient occlusion take up a lot of resources. Well, something like texture quality, geometry quality don't take up a whole lot, but like things like lighting and shadowing really does. So just play around with these settings to make sure you have a good experience as well. Sensory things, blur all the way off. Don't want that in multiplayer. Screen shake all the way off. Don't want that in multiplayer. Exposure, I have turned off. It ruins your visual awareness when it comes to the game. Full screen effects, again, I just turn off all the way as well. Speed lines turn off because it's just extra things on the screen. Sharpening, I just keep at default for 60. There is in-game music with here, which I actually kind of like to turn down a little bit so that it just doesn't interfere with my gameplay experience. I also do have the hit detection turned up from default all the way up to 10, just how I get better recognition when I do hit my shots. Team colors, I just leave at default. I guess I'm just a classic boy. I've seen a lot of people turn these up to yellow. Yellow seems to be a really good way to kind of recognize different colors. But ultimately, it kind of comes down to preference when it comes to enemy UI colors. So those are the best settings for you to run in Halo Infinity. If you have any suggestions, leave them in the comment section down below. If you're new to the channel or missing any content from me recently, check out this playlist right here. I got a link to all my Halo Infinite news and informational videos we've been uploading daily about. Thanks so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. And I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.